In today's video, I show you the Anchor Make M5C. But before we get into today's video, just want to share with you what the GGGGs are for this month. Each month, Bob the Beholder picks some of my Patreon supporters to receive gratitude gifts. And for this month of August of 2023, we have this printed, painted, and flocked ruins from the Battlefield Kickstarter. Two pledges for the Battlefield's Kickstarter that's going on right now. Two pledges for the upcoming Timescape Kickstarter. Two full sets of Dynamod STL files. Since doing this review video, a bunch of new files have been added and instructions are provided for hue forged floor tiles so you get colored tiles that are a true no paint option. Use the link in the video description to Dynamod to see the full range available. And finally, $100 going towards a crowdfunder, which my Patreon supporters are currently voting upon. And I do have to note that the Gwaik 10 watt laser has been removed from the GGGG list just because that is a terrible machine after having a chance to work on it. But use the link below to go to my Patreon page where you can find out more information about this month's gratitude gifts. So fairly recently, I did do a review video for the Anchor Make M5 and I gave glowing reviews of that. Well, I was surprised when Anchor Make reached out to me again to say that their new machine, the Anchor Make M5C, has just come out, and this is a smaller and more affordable version than the M5. If you wanna see my original video, go ahead and check it out here, where I really think that is a true plug and play. And the only comparison I'm gonna make is how much smaller is this than the M5? Basically, the build plate is about 15 smaller along the X and Y axis, where this is 220 by 220 by 250. And the M5 is 235 by 235 by 250. So this 220 by 220 is about the standard size that you're gonna find in other 3D printers. So it isn't really a smaller version per se, it's just smaller in comparison to the larger build plate of the M5. But overall, I think this is a great addition to the lineup for Anchor Make because the M5 is about $700, $800, and this is gonna be almost half of that cost retailing currently at about $400. So for those of you who balked a little bit at the higher price of the M5, the M5C makes it much more affordable. And at this point, I would definitely be paying the extra money at $400 to purchase the Anchor Make M5C over almost any other entry level printer, such as a very popular Ender 3. Because this has auto bed leveling, this is a true plug and play. This is definitely just straight off the bat, I'm gonna say it is definitely worth paying the extra to pick up the M5C now that the price has gone down uh, to being more approachable to those entry level printers. The amount of time that you're gonna be able to save just by not needing to hassle with bed leveling, with not needing to you know, turn the screws or come up with alternative plates because this texture build plate is awesome. I've never had to put glue on it, never had to do anything to get the prints to stick on it. So because of that, this comes highly recommended. I'm gonna give the Gaming Geek stamp of approval up front in this video before I get into the details so that you guys know that I think this is an awesome printer, especially for those of you who are just getting into the hobby and you're looking for a real, true plug and play. The other things that really make this printer friendly to beginners is that it only takes 10 minutes to put this together out of the box, screw on this upper half with some bolts, plug in the motor cables, and you are set to go. One of the things that's important for you to know also is that you do need to download the app. And I did already have it downloaded for my uh, M5, but for some reason, when I initially tried to add this printer to my app, it didn't work. And when I reached out to Anchor Make, they basically said, hey, make sure that you update your software for the app. And after I did that, this did instantly recognize it. And I was able to do all of the features through the app to update the firmware and to get this running. As per usual, I did go ahead and print out a number of benchies. So the first one I printed out was the fast mode at 0.25 millimeter height, and that took only 17 minutes. And as you can see here, the quality looks 
pretty much the same as it was on the M5. Pretty smooth sides because it was printed at 0.25. Um, it is a little bit rougher across the top, but overall, I think the quality is pretty good for 17 minutes. You can see a little bit on the tops that it didn't completely close. Next, I printed up at fast 0.2, I lowered it to 0.2 so that it is greater detail. And that took 35 minutes, which again, on my normal printers, it, that would take about an hour 20, hour 40. But it did close off the tops here compared to the 0.25 at the um, same speed. And the quality again looks pretty good. And in fact, uh, the lower layer lines make it so that the details look a little bit better than the 0.25 but overall pretty happy with the results of both of these, just getting really good quality for a higher speed. Now I did go to normal mode, which is about half the speed of the fast mode theoretically, but I did keep it at 0.2 millimeter height. That took 40 minutes, so it wasn't that much longer than the um, 0.2 at fast mode. So I don't know quite um, the speed levels because that's definitely not uh, twice as long as the fast mode. But overall, I think the quality looks pretty good as well. Very, very similar. But I did wanna mention that they have a new mode with the slicer. So you have the normal mode, and then now you have precision mode, which is a new feature. And here you are uh, be able to print at 0.16 millimeter height. So greater detail, but it's still printing fast at 500 millimeters per second. So here is the print, lower layer lines. It took 48 minutes for this. And you can see that quality is excellent here. Now, obviously it's gonna take longer because you're lowering the layer lines, getting greater detail. And overall, pretty happy with it. I was surprised that it was printing. I thought Precision might have printed in the normal speed, but Overall, uh, pretty happy, have no complaints, and you can tell a little bit across the top that you're getting a little more detail with the precision mode. Now here, let's compare it to the 0.25 fast mode and just see a little bit that, you know, I don't know if the increase or bump up in time is worth the greater detail because the fast one looks pretty good in and of itself. But the rest of the things that you see printed here, filament that they sent me, and all of these came from the app. These are STLs that you can find in the app, and their library isn't huge, but it gave me a variety of things to try to print out. I think this D20 Morningstar is awesome. This printed all as one piece, which is amazing, as well as this dragon. This um, flexible dragon is really cool. And then we have these two masks going on. This mask, I was super impressed, did fit on this plate and did uh, print without any supports. So very impressed with the ability of this to print out uh, such a, a large STL file right on this build plate. The other thing to note is that there is no screen, really no interface on the M5C. But what you do have is this play button, which again, I have never used because I am doing everything through my app or through the slicer. Another thing is that there is no camera that you can see sort of live uh, what is happening on the printer. But when I'm out, uh, I, I can open up the app and see how far along the print is. And I have the ability of pausing or stopping the print while I'm away from the house. Once again, I'm super impressed with AnchorMake and the M5C I think makes an entry level printer really affordable and again, a true plug and play. So if you're limited in funds, I think this is a fantastic printer to get in order to start your 3D printing career. Or if you already have 3D printers, this is a fantastic addition to your lineup of 3D printers. Go ahead and use the link below if you are interested in purchasing as it does provide me a little bit of a kickback. Again, subscribe to my channel because I will be coming out with two more videos featuring the M5C. I'll be experimenting with that 0.2 millimeter nozzle to see how good of miniatures I can 3D print from an FDM printer and we'll be producing some terrain as well. Hit that like button. Thanks for watching. Happy printing. We'll see you next time.